I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Jennifer Ruby, who is from the Roble District. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, where you teach and tell us what you teach. Okay. Um, I currently teach fourth grade at Bell Avenue Elementary School in the Robles School District. It's a self-contained class. Our, uh, our population in Robla is, um, is quite diverse. We have about 90% of our students who live below the federal um, poverty line, and about 50% of our students are English language learners. So what is that like working in a district where you've got, you know, uh, you know the, the low-income families, mm -hmm. and uh, how does that kind of alter what you do? Uh, it definitely makes us, um, it definitely makes us have to increase our, the diversity in how we teach. So we have a really large range between what students come to us with, be that academics or um, just resources at their house. So I think that the teachers that work in districts like this have to be knowledgeable about the population that they work with and then also um, creative in their teaching so that we can reach students at various levels. Um, in, my fourth grade in my fourth grade classroom this year, at the beginning of the year, more than half of my students were more than a year behind in their reading. And so simply teaching whole group instruction doesn't work with this population. We need to be able to um, meet with small groups and uh, meet with individuals in order to target their areas of need more effectively. So that's a real challenge because you're, you're mm -hmm. doing you know, diversified instruction mm -hmm. uh, and students are at different levels. So, mm -hmm. so when you do that, you know, how do you see the progress toward the end of the year? Well, I make sure that I start my year every, uh, regardless of what grade I'm teaching, I always start with a battery of assessments at the beginning of the year that give me baseline data on where my kids are. And then in addition to the regular tests that are uh, required by the state or by the district, I make sure that I readminister that set, um, that set of assessments periodically throughout the year so that I can make sure that my students are making progress on their own trajectory because if I give them the fourth grade test, they may not show any progress on a fourth grade test, but if I'm giving them um, a reading inventory or if I'm measuring their fluency, I know that even if they came to me at a first grade reading level, they're now at a second grade reading level or they're now at a third grade reading level. And that progress may not show up on a state test or on a, on a fourth grade benchmark. So I make sure that I'm tracking them on, um, on their own progress. How important is using data in a classroom? I think it's incredibly important. I think that it, um, if it's used well, it can um, it holds the teachers accountable to make sure that we are seeing um, seeing regular progress. It also informs my instruction. So I know that if I have a group here that um, that need word analysis skills, then I can pull that group and work on that. Meanwhile, I have students that are working at level, and I can work with them on using context clues to infer meaning. And if I'm, if I'm meeting with my students regularly and listening to them read or um, examining their writing with them, I know what I need to do in my, in my practice. And then the other thing that I can use my data for is to set individualized goals with my students so that they use the data to know whether they're making progress. And then they can track it and they can see um, you know, immediate feedback on, on what's working and what's not. And if some strategies are working with students, then I keep doing those. And if, other, if they're not working, then I have to change it up and do something different. So it's really individualized instruction in a group environment. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the biggest challenge you face in your classrooms? Is it, is it having a number of English learners? Is it just the, you know, the, the challenges with the, the reading levels? What would you say? For me, I think the most difficult, um, the difficult part of teaching is, um, is the range in academic abilities and then also the range in social emotional health. Mm -hmm. um, English language learners, I feel like, don't present that big of a difference because the types of, the strong um, teaching practices that we use for English language learners are simply good teaching strategies. And so if I'm employing those, then I'm reaching all of my kids. And so, um, so that's just, those are just good teaching techniques. And then, but with, uh, with social emotional health, I think a lot of kids come in and um, they start their day at very different places. Um, some kids are coming in without breakfast. And so, um, you know, at our school we provide breakfast, but if they, you know, didn't get there in time for breakfast and they're feeling a little grumpy, we need to make sure that that need is met because if they're, if they're coming in and feeling unstable or feeling unsettled, then they're not emotionally available 
for whatever I'm about to present academically. So I need to make sure that those needs are met before I can continue and, uh, and keep the, the classroom rigor in, in place. And so being able to, um, being able to tap into each child's needs is, uh, is incredibly difficult, but there really important. Okay. <laughs> there seems to be, uh, within the last several years, a real emphasis on focusing on the social and emotional wellness mm -hmm. of students. Mm -hmm. And you, you touched on that a bit about making sure that they're emotionally available for mm -hmm. you. Um, when do you think that swing started and, and what kind of impact has that had? I'm not sure when the, when the swing started. I know that um, for me, I became more, um, I became more aware of it probably about three years ago. And um, I was lucky enough to have a training um, on the RULER project, and that's through Mark Brackett at Yale. And um, RULER stands for um, Recognize, Understand, Label, Evaluate, and Regulate. And it's a program that allows children to uh, recognize what their emotions are and the impact that they're having on their daily lives and um, teaches them strategies to employ in order to um, in order to make changes in, in their daily lives and then going forward into their, you know, long, longer term mm -hmm. goals. Um, and so one of the things that I do in my classroom is as students, move, as students come in the room, I have, a, I have a grid on my wall and each student has a, a, has a push pin and they, they mark how they're feeling um, on a pleasantness scale and then also how they're feeling on an energy scale and, um, and that gives them an overall emotional state. And then, um, and that puts them into quadrants. And so I can really quickly at the beginning of the day kind of check in and see, okay, these students are feeling a little stressed and these, feel, these kids are feeling a little bit um, depressed or low today. So I can kind of go and, and check in with them. And while I'm checking in with students, I have the rest of them sort of writing about what they're, um, what they're feeling today. So um, one, of the, one of the prompts that we've been working on is today I feel blank because blank. And then, so they're sort of looking for what, what's making me feel this way. And then from there, um, we work on strategies to, um, to either maintain that emotional state, if it's a positive one, or if it's somewhere that's not very effective for them for school, um, what can they do to change it? So maybe they need to, um, you know, if they're just feeling a little bit excitable, then maybe they need to listen to some calm music. And then if my whole class is feeling that way, then I'll put some calm music on in my room or, um, you know, have them look at some calming pictures. And then, you know, if a student's feeling particularly angry, perhaps they need a break to go hit the tetherball for a little while and release that energy. Because if they're all amped up, then, you know, they're not ready for fractions. And by taking that extra step by, you know, emotionally checking in with the students, mm -hmm. what impact have you seen? It has changed. Um, I, I refer to you know a few of my students as sort of barometer students. They kind of change the weather in the classroom, and if I can help control the weather a little bit, then it you know it, it impacts the entire room because I'm more available for all of my students if I'm not having to you know manage the outbursts and the behaviors during instruction, and so I can address those immediately and then and then move on with our day. Um, you know, whatever it is, maybe I need to, you know, give a student a granola bar or let them go, you know, walk the halls with a timer for five minutes, you know, whatever it, whatever it is that they need in order to be available for instruction. And if I can keep them in class, that's, you know, that's my number one goal is to have them be there so that they are available for instruction. Mm -hmm. Well, finally, let me ask, what does it mean to you to be named a teacher of the year for your district? Um, it's a it's a really big honor. the uh, the day that I was um, the day that I was named Teacher of the Year, I got pretty emotional um, about all of the really amazing teachers that I've worked with in the past and how they've impacted the way that I teach and um, and the the things that I care about in my teaching and um, you know some of the teachers that I try to emulate and um, you know I've I've had really amazing collaborative teams in the past. And so I, you know, I sent out messages to all of them and just said, like, I'm, you know, I got Teacher of the Year, and it's partly because of you, mm -hmm. um, because I, I do feel that being able to collaborate with my peers and um, and learn from them has has been has meant the world to me as far as you know what I'm able to bring to my teaching and what I'm able to bring to my students. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. We've been speaking with Jennifer Ruby, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2016 for the Robles School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.